Welcome, everyone. I'm William Henry. I'm the author of Ascension, Divine Stories of Awakening the Whole and Holy Being Within. I'm thrilled to have you with us today for this roundtable discussion with some of the contributors of my book. They've all got some incredible stories to share about personal stories, about their Ascension experiences that I know you're going to find riveting, informative, and also inspirational, too. We'll get to those in just a moment. But, but first, I just wanted to share just a very brief uh, introduction to the, the idea of ascension. What is ascension? It seems like just in the past maybe five years, all of a sudden this concept has been, been on the lips of so many people. We, we now have ascension coaches. We have ascension retreats. We have ascension everything. And that that is really the hallmark of our times, in my opinion. I, as an ascension scholar, someone who has been studying this subject for over 20 years, in, comp in a company with the, the concept of human transformation into a higher being, I, I've noticed that we are truly not on a runway, in my opinion. We're not taking off to go anywhere. We're landing. We, we have been up in the air as a species, so to speak, for thousands of years. This idea that a human can transform and become more whole, more holy, more complete, and indeed perfect, as the ancients described, is something that's always been a bit kind of up there or out there, beyond the reach of the ordinary person, reserved by the priest, withheld by the churches, never taught in school. But that's what's changing in our time. And it's because we are coming into a, a place of landing, of surety about who we are as individuals, our, our spiritual capacities, our mental, physical, and emotional capacities. We're all gaining tremendous insight and knowledge about what it means to be a more whole, holy, and complete human being and the impact that that will have on our planet. There is a direct correlation between how humanity conceives of itself and the world in which we dwell. The idea here is that as we rise and ascend, climb the, the spiritual and evolutionary ladders, we become better caretakers, not only of our own individual bodies, but also of our planet. This opens up all kinds of tremendous possibilities for us. We're talking literally about not just transforming the human species, but saving it, of finding new ideas and solutions to contemporary dilemmas from artificial intelligence to climate change that we can't even think about in our unascended lives. But as we begin to reach out to become more whole and holy, new ideas, new inspirations, things we've never even dreamed of or thought of as possible are now coming into our consciousness. And that's what my book was about, is a, is a, is a way to, to establish that we are on this ancient timeline, began many thousands of years ago, and that we are the culmination of the process, that everything in human history, all of human history is pointing to this moment right now and the decisions that you and I make for ourselves individually as well as collectively. And so once again, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to offer this book, but even more excited to share the stories of those who have contributed and ultimately then to learn of your story as well, because I know everyone that's participating in this watching right now has a story and it is so valuable that your voice be heard, your story be shared because it, it goes to this idea of creating this higher, higher mind that all of us can tap into. So with that in mind, I'm going to go around the round table and talk with each of the, the contributors individually and at the end we'll, we'll have a wrap up. So uh, my first guest is Susan Cassaro who shares a chapter with us called Ubiquitous Nature of Love. Susan, welcome to the Ascension Roundtable. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's, thank you so much for contributing your, your amazing story to, to, to the book. Truly inspiring. Give us a, 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 an elevator pitch version of your story. Tell us what happened. I had been going to these retreats with um, um, a guru named Sai Ma. And in between these retreats, I had this mentor that I was talking to and would talk about things that I was going through. And just before this conversation, I was thinking that um, I hadn't done my homework, I hadn't been eating, I hadn't been meditating in the way. And all of a sudden, this place came crashing down on me that has crashed on me for years. And I felt like I was back in high school and even younger. And I just immediately started beating myself up. Um, it was a behavioral 
pattern in my head that it just was a default. And it was uh, this spiritual aspect of myself was always this carrot in front of me that I was never going to reach because I wasn't good enough. Right. And then I had this aha moment, which everything changed just prior to that call. Everything changed within moments. And I had this conversation with my higher self, my Christ itself. Wow. And it was amazing because since that moment, my life has changed and I've had other moments that have continued to evolve me in ways where I'm letting go of those old parts and old patterning that have been stuck in cellular memory for so long. So next, we are going to talk with uh, Donna Keebler, who has her story called I Am the Sistrum. Hello there. Hi, Donna. Welcome Thank so much to the Ascension Roundtable. Thank you. Um, so basically, my story is essentially a coming home story. Okay. It's a story about soul retrieval, which mm -hmm. is actually what I've dedicated my life to for the last eight years since I had a, a big kind of pow awakening, <laughs> like where the <laughs> lights turned on. It was like just like that. And um, so my, my life has been focused so much on reintegrating soul parts. And I also have a healing practice and I do that for my clients as well. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I believe, at least for me and for the folks I work with, that so many of us feel lost and incomplete because, in my opinion, from my experience and from my studies, we're fragmented, right? So we have lots of soul parts all out and about um, in the etheric. And as we go to different locations, this is just one way to reintegrate, of course, in my experience, we go to different locations on the planet, places we're called to. And when we become more conscious of that, we actually can kind of scoop up these lost soul parts and have it again, in my experience, these big aha moments. Right. So in my story, um, I've visited Egypt twice now, and my story takes place in Egypt, um, spans over three years, um, book ending, Egypt's book ending my, my journeys. And I discovered, I came into contact with something I didn't know what it was at the time, um, the Sistrum, which mm. is an ancient healing, sound healing device. <laughs> um, it's pretty primitive looking. And yet it's, to me, it's very like highly, it's a highly technological device. Mm. So through this engagement with the Sistrum, I was able to reintegrate a soul part um, very important one that was probably lost from lifetimes ago. Um, and it's, it's, I, I try to make it kind of funny and amusing because I do feel like while Ascension is serious business, it can also be kind of fun and playful too. I mean, this is amazing when we start to feel more like ourselves, then we feel amazing. We feel enlightened. We feel holy W H O L and then holy H O L Y. And we get lighter and brighter and shinier. And I've learned not to take myself as seriously as I used to, even when I'm in the darkest depths of um, the darkest depths of places that we'll call them the lower astrals. <laughs> so that's my story. Um, my hope is to um, give folks an example of how one way of my ascension journey or ascension process, and maybe it could be valuable for them as well, as far as going, getting called to different locations. A lot of my clients will say, oh, I just got called to XYZ location and mm -hmm. it felt like home. So that's a common theme I've noticed with myself and other folks. So, so that's pot potentially one way for our readers to become more conscious of why they're just going to different locations on the planet. It could very well be, and possibly, probably is, to reclaim a, soul, a lost soul part. Now we're going to uh, speak with Julia. Is Julia here with us? Or Julia Eiler? Yes. Hi, William. Oh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Julia. Thank you so much for uh, contributing to the book and also for joining us for the roundtable today. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Nice to meet everybody else here also. <laughs> now, divinely orchestrated leap, that, that is, that, those are three really powerful words. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that experience, and, and I won't give it away here in the video, but, you know, that, that was a decade ago now, and 
I kind of go back a couple years before that, you know, I had literally lost my corporate job from the last decade and lost my husband to a heart attack in the same week. Oh my you know, gosh. It, it's, yeah, next, you know, over the next 18 months to two years, both my daughters left home, went to college and, you know, just the trauma, you know, I had really disconnected from everyone around me from, from God, you know, from, you know, just any experiences at all. I I had just really disconnected from myself. Right. So, you know, I always say I was a bit more sleepy than most at that point and it took a visit from otherworldly beings to really shake me awake right yeah and you know and I chose to share this story this awakening story with the world finally and uh bless you for for putting that out there um but I did that so maybe that though so that those can you know maybe others can find comfort in their journeys also you know awakening Awakening to the truth of this dimension, to the truth of our divinity, you know, it looks different for every soul, right? right. But awakening and ascension it doesn't always look like this overnight, you know, transformation. You know, it usually doesn't, you know, but at its core, ascension to me means really developing that, that reconnection you know that connection to god's spirit you know and that will look different to each soul here and i have people ask me a lot so you know what are your divine gifts you know because because of this story and and because i teach souls how to get in touch with their extraordinary gifts and i talk a lot about the clairs developing our intuition you know but my my response to what has transpired for me personally you know, I've been able to develop a deep and intimate relationship and trust in God. You know, when I had that experience, you know, I dived down, you know, immediately dived down into rabbit holes. You know, it, 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 it was something I had never fathomed that, you know, it was possible. And, you know, for the next year, you know, finally, I, you know, at that point, I had reason to you know, reason to, to think again, reason to dream again, reason to reconnect with God again. So now we're going to hear from Pamela Nance. Pamela. My ascension story um, happened in the spring of 1990. I was in my senior year of undergraduate school, um, finishing up my degree in anthropology and archaeology. Um, I was also working double shifts at a local restaurant. Uh, So we were going into Mother's Day graduation. I was studying for final exams, uh, juggling all these different hats. And as you can imagine, it was quite stressful. Um, I'd had a history of uh, duodenal ulcer, but it had been under control for a number of years. But I guess being in this high stressed environment, it decided to rear its ugly head. And um, I experienced a life threatening medical event as a result. Um, I collapsed in my home. Um, My husband had to conduct uh, CPR as he awaited the ambulance and Um, I was gone. I I was oblivious to my surroundings here on earth. I had gone to just this incredibly beautiful um, place. Um, I did not go through a tunnel. I was not greeted by deceased relatives or loved ones. Um, I was just on the side of an, an incredible mountain range. Mm. overlooking and just an incredibly beautiful green valley and off in the distance was another mountain range snow capped um but what struck me were the colors mm-hmm. the colors were are really just indescribable i cannot relate to anyone um just the the overwhelming feeling of the beauty um, that I was surrounded by. Um, And in the middle of this green valley 
was uh, the tree of life. There was one tree standing there and I knew that it was the tree of life. Wow. And as soon as I had that thought, I was under the tree. And um, I'll leave this part for the readers, but I was surrounded by just beautiful beings. Um, and one that I knew um, in particular, but they weren't human. Um, so you'll have to read the story to find out, but it was quite an incredible experience. I, I, I was all knowing at that point um, that this is, you know, this is what's real. <clears throat> what I was experiencing previously, that's not real. This is reality. And it's where I wanted to stay. Um, but off in the distance, my husband began calling my name. Um, and it's kind of like if you fall asleep on the couch at night and you don't want to get up, you know, you just don't want to get up and go upstairs to bed or whatever. It was kind of that same feeling, you know, I could hear him off in the distance and he's calling me and I was becoming quite angry because I did not want to leave this beautiful place, but his voice was very insistent. And so I, you know, I came back up to consciousness and he said, don't move, the ambulance is on the way. Uh, but as it turns out, I was hospitalized for about five days. I lost nearly half my blood volume. I had to be transfused. And that was a little difficult because I have um, RH negative blood and it was hard to find that blood type. None of my family members matched. Um, so it was a little touch and go. I think they coded me a couple of additional times um, in the ED. Um, but at any rate, I survived, um, but I was completely changed. Um, the experience changed me at an energetic vibratory level. Right. Okay, that is going to bring us to Debbie Irvine. Hi, William. Hi, Hi Debbie. Debbie. How are you? Thank you so much for being with us. I'm great, thanks. Um, so my story it seems a short snapshot of everything that we're discussing. So I'm trying to write down all the backstory that is so important as well. And and well, uh, first of all, your background just takes me to the place that <laughs> you were describing. Okay, so I'm already there. You're you're definitely somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So um, my story is the compassion and healing of Christ, which was my mystical experience in Santiago Cathedral, and. Mm. It, That's in Spain, uh, right? The Santiago Cathedral in Spain? In Chile. In Chile. Sorry. In Chile. In Chile. Yes, okay. yes. Because I was coming back from doing a month's ayahuasca healing ceremonies. In mm -hmm. As we all do. <laughs> yes, yes. I traveled <laughs> from Australia with a psychologist. And while I was there, I was working with the maestro. And um, my own intention was to connect with a healing master. And so I actually connected with the Christ consciousness and my Chilean uh, shaman who had been training for 15 years with the maestro also told me during the week that he worked with the Christ consciousness as well as the ayahuasca and the indigenous uh, spirits of the plants and the Icaros, as you know, in, in the northern parts of, of Peru. Now, this was... Um, I got sick in 2005 and I spent seven years in a bedroom. I lost all my capacities. I was made totally and permanently disabled. I had to have a year to learning to walk. I couldn't read or write. And I went through a full shamanic death. Um, I lost everything in my life, my job, my husband, my family of origin, all that sort of stuff. And, um, and during that, my dreams started guiding me towards healing. And so I went back to university in 212 when I couldn't read or write and started religious studies and then the Master of Counseling. And my brain started working. And also I was doing Master of Suicidology and started to travel the world in 215. But the key aspect was where I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia to make me totally and permanently disabled, I later, uh, three years later was diagnosed with common variable immune deficiency, which is a primary immune deficiency, which has 1% chance of healing. And I had wow. to go to hospital every month for the rest of my life for plasma immunoglobulins. And wow. so during finishing my master's research in 2016 on the wounded healer, I started to reactivate my my immunoglobulins. And so from 217 on, this was the, in the hero's journey, 
the spiritual transformation mm -hmm. aspects of my journey. And so what this led to a year later was being cleared completely of hospital treatment and critical hypertension. Wow. And so it's been a very unexpected journey, but my dreams have guided me all my life and I've had mystical experiences since I was a teenager. So what um, my story and the backstory of it is that, yes, as you say, when we sleep, when we dream, when we have these amazing experiences, we're ascending and getting information. So I assume during the seven years that I slept and my body died, I was, you know, clearing out like the seven years in the desert that the mystics had. And, and so I'm co-creating through my higher self, this whole journey. And my dreams are connecting to synchronicities that I always managed to activate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't think I was activating them, but that's part of my journey. And so I end up in Santiago and my main tour for the day before was cancelled. And so I'm offered this tour with a one on one guide with Matthias, who's a young man in his 20s, who I discover is just starting to do spiritual healing himself. And he's seeing auras and learning about Reiki. And so he gets me for four hours <laughs> and we talk about everything that's healing and my, my master's studies and my ayahuasca experiences. And I also um, was about to go and study and train in shamanism and dream training in America. And so um, he, he, he was, there was a synchronicity in the story and the co-creation. And then as we left the outer Plaza de Arma, which is all the hustle and bustle, and as I wrote, uh, Alain Day's assassination, and I go into the cathedral and I describe the sacredness and the beauty and the silence that just takes you into another world. And, you know, I had religious training um, as I grew up, and so I start to circumambulate the cathedral and through all the crypts. And I come in the spiral into the center of the cathedral and there is the statue of Christ. Mm -hmm. And behind are the marble pillars with the crimson veins. And in the statue, in this one, he has pulling his robe back to exp expose his sacred heart. And so I just stand and look at him and suddenly everything becomes alive. And so the veins behind start to pump like his heart the blood through my body and then I look up into his eyes and his face softens and it's like he comes alive and I'm looking at his face and his eyes are softening and he's looking at me and so I join with him and then his gaze goes out to the congregation where people are sitting and praying in the cathedral it's not a service it's just a day and I start to become embodied with him and he with me. And he starts to transmit, I guess is the way I say it, like a, a telepathic experience where he is showing me and giving me the feeling of these people, of their suffering, of their pain, of their prayers, of their hope. And I'm feeling all that. And then I'm with him as he is transmuting their hopes and pains and suffering into love and empathy and understanding and compassion and peace. Mm -hmm. And so it's the most extraordinary experience because we're joined. Hi, Claire. Hi there. <laughs> How are you? So happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And now tell us about your story. Well, uh, my story is called Home of My Soul. And it is about uh, my death experience that I experienced in the Nititapi uh, land in Blackfoot territory in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, on the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason I say that is because I was you know, born in England, I lived in South America, lived in three provinces in Canada. And so by the time I reach this uh, uh, experience, I had uh, lived in eight places, three different mm -hmm. continents, uh, almost uh, just getting 18 years old. And I had experienced, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse. And uh, so, but there was always a sense of warmth um, 
and sort of an understanding that this is what my my humanness was meant to experience. Like there was a different, and I always had a feeling that I was being guided because I didn't seem to 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 wear the clothing of somebody who may have had such a full container at such a young age. So in any event, I was thinking of moving back to, I had just graduated from high school and I was thinking of moving back to uh, to, to England or to Europe or ex expand my vision. I was offered a scholarship, but um, I chose not to accept it and uh, and and just see what what was there in the world for me. So I was doing playing a baseball game uh, with so some friends, and my brother was there. And uh, we we I was on first base, and I went up to catch the fly ball. And the picture also came went up to catch the fly ball, and he came down. He landed on my chest, and then moved backwards, and my head hit the floor and bounced back up, and then he landed on my head, and. From my experience, I, I rose out of my body and said, I feel great. And so at that time, I was like, whoa, like it was it was like I had a, a, a jolt of, I don't know, the most caffeine you could possibly think of. And I could see my surroundings on the earth. I could see both teams, the players and my my team. And the at that moment, I sort of I ascended and then I was in a fields of this white light which is inexplicable and uh but i've i've sort of chalked it down to when you see the sun on on the water and there's that line of the water like on glimmer glass lake and it's and it's so magnificent and shimmering but yet transparent and light and beautiful so this was me uh inside of me perceiving me uh, mm -hmm. So it was like through three different lenses. And uh, in that space, there was, you know, just a profound uh, beauty of, of self and beauty of consciousness and knowing uh, the I am that I am. And so uh, as I heard, I, I started to, to, to hear the other dimensions. And as I knew that I was meant to, uh, to go back into this earthly plane, I could hear the voices of those around my physical body, but yet still on the other side, mm -hmm. mourning. And so there's a sense of feeling the, the grief and the sadness uh, in a way as though it's as though it's air. So I was propelled back into my body, or I, I'm transitioned back into my body, and I looked around in this earth field, but they still not seeing me. And I looked back and I saw my body lying on the ground because I was saying, you know, I feel great, you know, like I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. But as they passed through me, I had yeah. to look back and say, okay, I'm not there. So I lied back down into my body and um, to let everyone know, like the, the, there's no need to suffer, I'm okay, I'm okay. But um, I had to really open and close my eyes, you know, several times to, 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 to make a connection with my physical self because they were raising my eyes and saying, oh, you know, she's not, she, she's, her eyes, she's not breathing, there's no pulse. And so the suffering, you know, it just encouraged me more to sort of, to, to revive myself as such. And um, so finally, I was able to, to close my eyes, squeeze them tight, and then open them back up. And then uh, I felt this heavy gravity of the human flesh, of the, of, of the body, of what gravity right. really is when it's pulling yeah. you down. And uh, so I won't tell you the ending, but it was, needless to say, quite a shock. No one right. rushed me to the hospital because they knew that whatever they had seen in my passing, that it was a story that was going to impact them as well for the rest of their lives. So I'm William Henry, once again, author of Ascension, Divine Stories of Awakening the Whole and Holy Being Within. I'm so glad you've been with us. I look forward to sharing uh, more of your stories in, in the days to come. And, and hopefully ins you'll inspire others to share their stories as well, because this is what is going to ultimately transform our world. Letting people speak their truth, letting people have this experience and then share that experience in a way that is honoring, that is affirming, and ultimately 
assist others on their ascension path. So thank you so much for being with us today for this roundtable. We'll look forward to seeing you soon.